Josh, I'm excited to bring you a triple header tonight. You know, we like our softball and baseball and threes, um, just like our everything else, you know, my rolls and my pies. Um, tonight's a great night. I'm excited to get into um, a big night of of just, just softball. We do a lot of sports. We do a lot of music, but our, our passion always comes back to softball. Um, Dan had to cover a couple of events. He may be here later tonight, since his love, um, but I love being able to do these these one-off uh, kind of combos with our guests. And we've got a special one tonight. We wanted to bring somebody that we've been tracking down for a long time from Indiana. We've actually got Cora Bassett stopping by tonight from Indiana. Been tracking her down. Got some records we're going to talk through. Just going to talk softball and what's next for her and just really all-around love for the game. So it's my joy to get right into it and bring on our special guest, Cora. Cora, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great. I'm doing even better because I can see you're a Cardinals fan. So yeah, oh, you see that? Okay, Cardinals, yeah. Yeah, I have a Cardinals shirt on, so love so it. We, we've got we've got some common ground there, right? So yes, yes, <laughs> well, Cora, th thanks again for making time. I know you're busy, and it's never even in even in collegiate sports, there's never a day off. So thank you for your time. I'm excited to get to it. Uh, Dana and I have been tracking you down for a long time, and wanted to wait till we could do you right and showcase you on the platform like this. So thanks for making time. Um, so I'm going to get into some questions that we have for you to run back and forth. Uh, and then at, towards the end of that, I'll do a little silly segment called Rapid Fire, and I'll close it with you kind of giving a chance to preach your message to the audience and your mantra. Okay. So awesome. Yep. Sounds great. So I love it. So take me back. So day one, obviously before the elite big 10 player, by the way, the, the record for the most doubles in a season. I still love that. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Thank, you. So, Thank you. So before, before you grind out records as one of the big 10 players of the decade, um, before that, um, walk me back all the way to probably the little league, these things, when did softball begin for you in the, in, in the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I probably started playing. I mean, since I could start walking when I was like three or four, my, my parents were just both super competitive people. Like, and they just wanted, they wanted me to experience that competitive that they had growing up. They didn't play like college sports or anything, but they were just like, always just like wanting to be the best they could be in whatever they did. And so they really instilled that in me. And so just from a young age, like I was playing softball, soccer, basketball, track, like you name it, like I played it. And so I think I just, with softball, like I'm going to be honest, like, it wasn't my first love or anything. I would say my first love was probably soccer. Like, I okay. was absolutely, yeah, I was, I was loved, absolutely loved soccer. It was my <laughs> number one passion. I was this player that was just super competitive and wanted, I won the ball all the time. Like, if, like, my dad used to do this thing where he was like, whose ball is it? I'd be like, my ball. Like, I wanted the ball. And so it didn't come until about, like, my eighth grade year. Like, I was, I was having to go between soccer and softball and deciding what I wanted to play. And I was just getting more offers. I had more chances in softball. And so I ended up just being like, okay, I'm going to take a chance here. And I ended up just absolutely falling in love with softball um, by well, the time my freshman year of high school rolled down. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad you did. I mean, obviously, I'd love to see some of those little league uh, soccer, you know, takes out there somewhere, you know, back in the day. But so uh, obviously, multi-sport, talented athlete. When did you transition uh, into only, if there was a time, strictly softball? About what age did that hit for it? Just going all softball, you know? Well, I, I mean, I played high school. I did high school soccer and high school track up until my senior year of high school. So I was, I guess I wasn't a one sport athlete until my freshman year of college, but okay. um, I actually didn't play high school softball though. So I did high school soccer and high school track only in high school. And I would just do travel ball for softball because I still wanted to play soccer. And like, I just, there wasn't enough time for me to enjoy, like to add high school softball in the mix and travel softball and high school soccer and high school track. Yeah. So one of those had to get, cut out. So. And get an education and somewhat get an education too. Yeah, no, and get somewhat, right? yeah, so, and somewhat yeah. do homework kind of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and make family time. Well, that's yeah. cool. We actually yeah. have a lot of soccer. Uh um, we, we feel like soccer and softball kind of go hand in hand, right? So um there's a couple people that probably you didn't know or pay attention to this. Uh, Glenn Davis, ESPN, loves what you do. So okay. he's a soccer guy. Oh. So we so yeah, he, he'll be watching. But no, soccer is wow. a big part of the athletic side, and I can see that. Um obviously the way we watch a lot of video and it's cool. The internet's a cool thing, so we can see some of your the games and your very fast there's no question <laughs> so i can yeah, see I can, yeah. I can see that for most people getting That's, to then that 90 foot walk it takes about two and a half seconds for you it's about 2.0 flat right yeah. so, um so obviously we started kind of all through high school and all that's really cool so the multi-sport thing stuck with you um so it had to be a point maybe it's an influencer um you know maybe someone was kind of working with you i know the scholarship thing but was there an influence that stood out to you that says you know what i'm going to take this path down the road of softball um more than others like what influence maybe your dad, mom, something, maybe a coach, what, what made you go that path? You know? Yeah, I think, well, I think for me growing up, I grew, I, so I grew up in Southern Indiana. Right. And so there, I didn't have like, there weren't a ton of women here, like girls that were, like, were going to play collegiate sports or like collegiate, like, or going to like take that next step, I guess. And mm -hmm. so 
when I would like talk to my parents about I'd be I would just be like I like I want to be that like girl that like other little girls in this area can like kind of look up to and be like okay like I can do that like because we just didn't have like a ton of that going on in southern Indiana and so like now like the past like probably five years now we there the 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 southern Indiana softball town has just boomed and like it's not just because of me there's also like 20 other players in the area that have just like just decided like hey like we're gonna make this happen like we're gonna make southern Indiana like one mm-hmm. of those places where, where college on D1 map. yes and like where college D1 coaches can be like hey, like, we want to, like, like, we want to come down here, like, we want to recruit from Southern Indiana, and, like, I think, and I think that's also, like, like, my, my, uh, my college coaches right now, Coach Stanton and Coach Bell and all them, they always talk about how they want to recruit locally, they want to recruit in Indiana, and so I think for us to, like, I just wanted, I just, like, want to make sure that, like, Indiana University, like, recruits out of Indiana, like, they, like, want to stay, stay local, like, I love that. I think there's a, and that's one of the things, again, um, you, you, you sell yourself short because you are very well known around here. We're like I said, we're in Kansas and our audience from Brazil to, to Finland knows who you are. Like you are very well known. Um, and one of the things that you do that again, off, outside of being an amazing, super fast athlete, um, never going to try to race ship. can sell that now. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but, uh, you, you do a lot with, with, with kids and that's giving it back. Right. I love that those camps that you do, and you don't have to do that. None of these, none of you athletes have to do that. Watching what you do. And I, that's what really kind of first caught my attention. I'm like, look at this camp. And you were talking about, you know, lessons and those things. And it's very, very affordable. And I'm like, man, you're, you're literally doing this to help others, you know? And I love that about you. So yeah. um, I think that's why people flock to you and it, it's homegrown. That's, I couldn't say it better. It's really cool to have that homegrown grassroots thing where you're growing the sport from kids around you. It's one thing to have a, you know, you all know about the transfer portal and bringing people from other States and all that, but to bring your own mm-hmm. talent and you help cultivate that, that's, that, that's gotta be a special thing in and of itself. You know, I love that. Yeah. So, thank wow. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank I, could talk, you. I, could, I could talk about that all day long, you know, but oh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. No, growing the sport is definitely something I've been so, I mean, and I'm so fortunate because I feel like I've seen so much growth in the sport of softball since when I was just like a freshman in college to now, like with athletes unlimited and like all these other like pro teams happen, like it's already grown so much. And I just can't even imagine like what it's going to be like in the next like five years, 10 years. Like, and I want to see that happen. I hope I can just be like, maybe just like a little tiny part of it, like yeah. what is to come. So like, maybe just like growing that, like the sport of softball here in Southern Indiana would be. See, just- I think, I think you're so modest because when I vacuum the house, like I want the, the news to know about it. I want to know, everybody <laughs> needs to know you're so modest. Like, no, it's oh, like, let's, no. let's chop up. Let, let's celebrate what's going on. It's really cool. So I, I love your sense of humility. I, I would say this, me and Dane talk a lot about history, right? So think past 20 years, right? You know, Coach Gasol obviously has led the way and all that we know, and we're from Oklahoma, but all of you ladies now, like now with the rise of Athletes Unlimited, with the Spark, with the Viper, you know, with a smash sports making a huge takeoff now, even uh, like Amanda Scarborough, some of these these people that are just stepping up and really making a brand um, now that's 20 years worth of really just hitting hard. Think about what you're a part of now the next 10 years for what you're going to be able to say, hey, look what I did. Maybe the camps that are going to be in after you instead of the Marionetta challenges. What about the what about the core bass? I mean, it's, it's possible. <laughs> right. So um, but that, that's what this is all about is growing the sport and making it better. And as Dana and I always say, it's definitely in good hands. Speaking of which, the what's next? Um, and you kind of mentioned it a little bit. I know you've got some playing time left with uh, in. Indiana, but when you're looking past that, are you ever thinking about maybe athletes unlimited or going pro or declaring or walk me through the next year for you? Yeah. Um, honestly, I haven't really, I'm trying to just like stay in the moment, like stay with this, like next year, like I have my fifth mm-hmm. year. So just like, I mean, my goal is to just like get Indiana university to the college world series, obviously. So it's like number one. And so kind of looking past there, like I, there's not really a whole lot I've thought about. I mean, I would, I think it'd be such a blessing and such an honor to like be part of like the like pro softball world and to grow the game. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, I haven't really thought much into, it. I'm just trying to take it one day at a time. One day. <laughs> yeah. One day at a time. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm right now just well, at Indiana university. So <laughs> I think you definitely have the, uh, the, the pieces coming together. And I, I keep going back to that local homegrown thing. That's really, it just stands out to me a lot. I like that. Um, again, there's always places to bring in pieces and we can say that from 10, you saw all the way up. There's always times we have guests and pieces that fit in, but I'm really, really, um, intrigued by the homegrown thing that you guys are doing. So I can't wait to see some more of your camps that you do. We, uh, anytime you have a camp, text me so we can throw it out there and, and oh, showcase you. for you. Yes. Um, yes, we're, we you. are, we are big on, on giving it back. So when you're looking at maybe, maybe one step at a time. Okay. We'll take that for now. Yeah. I know you're going to end up going pro, but <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> outside of that, are you, 
with the coaching theme that you already kind of do with some of the uh, the work that you do, have you ever thought about coaching in your future, uh, maybe down the road too? Or yeah, um, I I mean I'm gonna be honest. No, I I don't think that's my calling. I don't think like I love doing the camps and stuff. I love working with kids. I absolutely love it. It's been awesome. I do a lot of like lessons right now throughout the summer and. It's just never been coaching though has just never been something that's been a huge draw to me. I, and I, but I have so much respect for all the coaches out there because they just put so much time in like my, like coach Stanton, like she just, I mean, she has gone so much from home and like, I have so much respect for it and stuff, but like, I don't think that'll be my calling, but it's, who knows, maybe, I mean, I could see myself being a grad assistant maybe somewhere. Just I love to, that. Right, yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, but I'm also really open to anything, I guess. So <laughs> I think, <laughs> we'll uh, I think it's it's good to know you know what where you are. GA is a good step. I, I know a lot of players we've talked to. They kind of do that to get a feel for it. So um, I, whatever you decide, I'm sure it'll be the right decision because you've been you've been killing it so far. Like I said, um, you. <laughs> what, what you, I got it before I go into rapid. I got to take a moment though because like records are cool and to break them. And then I think coming in knowing that you're gonna just crush it. I don't think it's uh, illogical at all to talk about World Series because you literally are like record breaking. What, what take me back to the moment when you're like, all right, cool. We found out you're leading. The doubles later, right? So, yeah. I mean, I, I'd love to see that celebration. Did you guys go out afterwards and just, I mean, that's, that's a heck of a celebration. Walk me through that, yeah. what you were feeling yeah. at that time, you know? Well, it was actually really awesome because so my, this, um, the volunteer assistant at Indiana right now, her name's Coach Gabby, and she'd mm-hmm. actually held the record before me. So, like, she held the record. And so, like, and she had just broken it the year before. And so, like, I kind of, like, didn't really know about her because it was also my first year at Indiana after just transferring to Purdue. So, I was, like, I don't really know what, so I just kind of keep on hitting. Then I was like one away from it. And my coach texted me and she was like, Hey, just so you know, you are tied for this record, but like, don't sweat it. Just like, keep killing it, whatever. I love it. So I was like, okay. And so then, uh, you finally broke it at Nebraska and my coach walked out to the second base and she just shook my hand and she was like, you did it. (laughs) And I was like, thanks. Like, but Um, like, yeah, yeah. (laughs) That's crazy. So the, the, probably the elation of that at Nebraska, right? So you're, you're playing at big red, uh, which Courtney Wallace remembers you because we have her on tonight. And she's like, I was there oh. watching. She's like, she's like, I'm just, here we go. Right. It's like, you know, pictures oh, that, that love and respect, right? Like, oh, yes, I remember yeah. her. Yeah, I remember yeah. her. So it's, it, when a pitcher remembers <laughs> your name, you know, it's it's, yeah. it's a good thing. I, right? so, yeah, I remember her too. So she's also a great pitcher. So you, you guys were there that night, Big Red. So it's just kind of funny, the coincidence of that. You're like, hey, yes. so we pieced it. So that's awesome. I just, I love records. I broke a few records too. I broke the record for the longest snap, broke the record. Nice. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm, ki- I'm kidding. Yes. No, totally plain. So we, we have a few we have a few uh, things we do called rapid fire and this is really fun it's we already know you're a very energetic very outgoing person just from the stuff we've seen but there's some stuff that maybe the uh, coaches and scouts didn't know about you when they begin doing oh, yeah. all this so <laughs> when this goes into your pro tape hopefully this makes the reels oh. <laughs> uh, we, 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 we've got some uh some funny like rapid fire stuff now you have to pick it it's going to sound silly but you have to pick one or the other you can't not pick one okay so okay, okay. so first one here's the scenario so you're being um asked to walk around for the next 12 months and you cannot take this out of your pocket no matter what constantly have to you have to when you go up to the store wherever you're going you're required to try to pay for everything you have with one of these two things instead of giving your debit card or whatever say i'm going to pay for whatever with this are you going to have in one pocket you've got pork rinds in the other pocket you've got funyuns so what are you going to walk around for the next year trying to pay for everything with pork rinds or funyuns funyuns Okay, so sure. so when you go to Starbucks, here you go. Here's five bucks yeah, for the port. Yes, right. yes, yes, get it? My get buttons, it? Yes. yes. It's a, we, we, yeah. we do yeah. bet on these, so I, I will uh, afterwards. I'll tell you how I did. Dana and I always bet on what we think you're going to pick. Okay. Okay. So so next one, um, you're you're looking at uh, across this. There's a field, right? So across this field, million dollars for the taking. All you've got to do is one or two things. Got to walk across a bed of hot coals barefoot no problem okay. or yeah. or swim through the icy pond to get to the other side all you gotta do just simple walk across hot hot coals or swim through an icy pond to get to the other side like you gotta go under and come back up and get there so you swim in the ice or hot coals what are you going with yeah i'm gonna say swim in ice i think i, I think i just i mean the bottoms of my feet are gonna be awful for the rest of my life i feel like after walking out hot coals like I mean, okay, <laughs> as fast as you are, I, I, I bet against that one. I'm 0-2. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> it's okay. So you're, so you're going with the swimming. Okay, I got yeah, you. I so, like I said, I had you for pork rinds. I really did, and I had you for oh, the ice. So man. 0-2. Okay. It's okay. Well, these are, we get these questions from the fans and stuff, so we just kind of we kind of put what we feel like is the best package. Okay, so yeah. next one. Okay, um, you get to um, get a lifetime sponsorship of this as a, so chocolate milk sponsorship for the rest of your life. 
and all you got to do is get a tattoo of it on your arm okay so it's like core bass yay big 10 player of the decade right here we go so all you got to do is get this tattooed are you going with the borden logo or the nestle nesquik logo for your tattoo nesquik got you got one the bunny let's go all right yeah cool cool looking i got it yeah well cool yeah yeah okay so next thing um so next thing um down to the last two so you're required you you have to just you have to run out and have one thing you can take with you you're on a 12-hour flight you guys are going to international game we're going to say that and you get to take one of these two things with you that you can just all you can do is play with this specific object for uh, the whole flight you have to Mm -hmm. are you going with a light bright or an etch-a-sketch probably light bright Oh, I'm one for four. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. Okay. So last question. So you have to pick a movie marathon for the kids that you're teaching, right? So you're teaching them, okay. camp's over, and you're responsible for watching these kids for a whole day. They just drop them off and you got to watch them. So are yeah. you going to be going with movies that you pick from Disney or Nickelodeon? That's your final Disney. question. Disney. Yeah. Okay. I'm um, two for two for five. All right. So I did get a D minus. Yeah. yeah, D minus. Oh, okay. So yeah, D minus. Wait, but hitting no, that's actually so not okay. D minus. That's why I didn't. Oh, that's no, I'm kidding. Oh, that's a good F. Yeah, that's an F. It's all good. Well, <laughs> you guys, uh, Dane, if Dane would have been here, he would have hit a one. So it's all good. So those are just a little thing we do called rapid fire just for fun, Corey. I appreciate it. So the final yeah. segment we really do, um, we do a little thing called open mic, and this really is to kind of get back for a second, and kind of talk through some of memories and highlights and what motivates you. The last segment, um, you kind of mentioned a little bit, but what's maybe like a mantra or something that's kept you going or like this is this is what makes me as Cora do what I do and what I want to do for those maybe that are listening that want to be you or maybe even those that are in different phases of life. What's a mantra you could pass back on to someone else? Yeah, um, well, I guess I don't know if I have a mantra really, but I would say like I would say my faith like with um, Christ and all has really, really shaped my life. I think I came in. I came into my freshman year at Purdue University and I think I was like really lost in life and I didn't really know at all what I was doing and I was putting my identity through softball and like through all these things and like I think when I finally like really just like dove into like the Bible and just like really like focusing on things like realizing like hey like softball is cool like sports is cool but like it's not my identity it's not who I am as a person and so like I think when I finally realized that like it really just like opened my eyes and like really like like not only did I start playing better, like, but it just like, like, it just like freed my mind, I guess. Like, I don't I know. Love like, that. I guess, like, yeah. And I wasn't as worried as much about like my playing or like all this stuff. Like I could go through like the rest of the day and not worry about, <laughs> Hey, like, did I go like one, did I go two for four today? Like, like, I don't know. Like, so I think you found I think peace that, off the field, finding peace off yeah, the field, right? Yes. Finding peace. Yes. And so that's what I would really offer is that like to really, whether you're not like you're into your faith or not, but like just like find something to where it's like your identity isn't through your sport. Like, mm. like, cause it's never about that. Like you have to find something outside of your sport that like you, I love that. Like, yeah. Yeah. You're much more bigger than your sport, I guess. So I think that's one it's thing. Much, would... It's much bigger than softball, right? Is that yes, fair to say? Yes. Yes. hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. And we, and we love that about you. We have, we, we always say we have, you know, kind of uh all backgrounds, right? And uh, those that are strong in their faith, we love that. We support that. Um, with this, it's all about um, being what you are, whatever that may be, right? Yes, and we love that yes, about you. So yes, like I said, yeah. to those that do and don't, that's that's great, but yeah, celebrate 100%. what you are. And yeah, I think 100%. that's really, uh, I think it's really kind of a, a very strong sentiment at, at such a young age. I have a few years on you. So at your age, being that yeah. wise and knowing what you want, knowing this is who I am, this is what I want to be. Uh, we love that. So I love that it does go beyond the sport. And I, we, you know, kids from 10 you all the way up to college and then going into pro, sometimes they do have to realize and the parents that are with them too, hey, it is just a game, right? At the end of the day, yeah. Um, yeah. nobody's going to nobody's gonna die today on the field, you know, things like that, yeah. right? It's just yeah. a game. So yeah, 100%. Um, as fun as it is and as crazy as we go as fans, as much as we love to hoot and holler and tailgate and do all those things, um, it is supposed to be fun. Yeah. So I love that yeah. you acknowledge that. Yeah. Well, man, yeah. Cora, I'm, I'm excited to, oh, are you guys doing any fall ball at all? Any tournaments later on this year? Um, Not turn. I mean, we have a few fall ball games, but um, I'll, I'm actually pretty lucky. We're going to get to play in Evansville, Indiana this fall. So that'll be cool. Going back to my hometown. That's cool. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, no, we're just gearing up for spring. So it'll be, it'll I be love cool. it. Yeah. Well, Cor, we will. Dane and I will obviously we we celebrate and we promote you all the time. So we can't wait to see you out there for your your five year. Um, Please let it be known this is the first of many. We want to have you back on uh, recurring guest. Thank you. Thank you. Once once you're on the show, you're an alum, so you're welcome anytime. So thank um, you. (laughs) Don't be surprised if we bug you. Be like, yo, remember me? That that crazy? Yo, we come back on. So we will definitely hit you back up. (laughs) So for sure. um, For sure. Yeah. Cor, I'm excited to have got the chance to work with you. We'll we'll get this out for you as soon as we can. So please just know that Dane and I send our, our our best wishes and best of luck to you uh, even though we are 
at heart Sooner fans are really softball and general fans will be poem for you. Um, so here's to your fifth year. And when next Thank time we you. talk, uh, of course, next time we talk, I hope it's about you being drafted. Okay. Oh, <laughs> so. yes, for sure, for sure. Well, thank you for having me. This was awesome. It means a lot. Of course. Yeah, well, Corey, you're yeah. welcome to drop off. We'll be in touch and we'll get this out very soon. Okay. All right. Appreciate awesome. You so much. All right. Sweet. Sounds yeah, good. Have thank a good you. night. Yeah. yeah. Bye. So, so you guys, that's Cora. I told you she's an amazing, um, just inspiration, just a part of the show that we wanted to have on for a long time. Uh, Cora really has a good foundation about what she wants to be um, as a player, as a person. And I respect that, you know, um, can't say enough. I love what, what we heard. Um, great player, great person, always giving back and just all of the above, just great. So um, thank you very, very much for that, Cora. That was really cool. Uh, we'll be in touch very soon. We will we will make sure of that. Um, let's let's make sure we petition her to go pro because she definitely has the, the talent and, and the personality and all the, the it factors that you need. So um, that was one in the books of the triple header. So um, can't wait to showcase here very soon Kaylee Winslow talk about what she did with her team before becoming a trainer and whatnot. So she's up next. And then our night, uh, end of the night, uh, one will be Courtney from Nebraska. So uh, don't forget, as always, that we love you. And as Zane would say, thank you for listening.